Hello, this clip is about the relationship between international and domestic law, and I will focus on the situation in the Netherlands, so the domestic legal order of the Netherlands. You can look at this relationship between the two legal orders uh, from both perspectives. So let's begin with the perspective from the international legal order. Uh, then the most important principle is that states cannot refer to the rules of their own laws as an excuse or justification for not complying with their obligations in the international legal order. And this uh, principle you find in, in various guises, in uh, various documents and uh, resolutions. For example, the Declaration on Rights and Duties of States, in the uh, Vienna Convention on Law of Treaties, Article 27, and in the ILC Articles on State Responsibility. Um, it's more uh, tricky when we look at this relationship from the domestic perspective. So then the question is, how does international law penetrate, ha, enter into the domestic legal order? Uh, it comes from far and it enters the domestic legal order. It's important at the outset to emphasize that um, the effect of international law in the domestic legal order is determined by each state's own constitutional law. So not by international law, but by uh, the domestic constitutional law. And uh, a state has a choice of two approaches, uh, a monist or a dualist approach. So if a state uh, chooses a, a monist approach, then international law is automatically incorporated into the domestic legal order. So it automatically becomes part of the domestic legal order. If a state adopts a dualist approach, then international law first needs to be transformed or transposed into domestic uh, norms before it can be uh, part of the domestic legal order. Um, when we look at uh, the effect of international law in the domestic legal order, uh, where there are three key issues that we have to distinguish. Uh, first, we look at to the validity or the applicability of international law in the domestic legal order. Uh, second, we look at the invocability of international law in the domestic legal order otherwise referred to as uh, the direct effect of international provisions. And then finally, we look at uh, primacy or the supremacy of international law over domestic norms that conflict with these international norms in the domestic legal order. And so does international law prevail over domestic law and under what conditions does it do so? Um, it is again important to emphasize that the way these three issues are dealt with is uh, entirely determined by the constitutional law of each and every state. So that is why I wanted to focus on one particular state, uh, my own state, uh, the Netherlands. And so let's first look at uh, validity. Um, this is easy. Uh, all international law in the Netherlands um, is valid, uh, is applicable in the domestic legal order. Uh, most um, of international law is applied indirectly, so indirect applicability. And this uh, refers to a situation where uh, domestic law is interpreted in conformity with the international obligations comment on the Netherlands. And so all domestic law has to be applied in such a way that it is in conformity with uh, the Netherlands' international obligations. Uh, we call that indirect, indirect applicability of international law. Um, such uh, applicability of international law cannot lead to a contra legem interpretation of the Dutch uh, provision, uh, which means that the Dutch provision would be applied in such a way that it directly contradicts the ordinary meaning of the provision. That would be going too far. Uh, all this is based on unwritten constitutional law of the Netherlands. So now look at direct effect or invocability of international law before the uh, Dutch courts, for example. Um, 
So here we have to look to Article 93 of the Dutch Constitution, which states that only provisions of treaties and decisions by international organizations, which are binding on all persons, by virtue of their contents, can be invoked uh, directly uh, before the Dutch courts. So, um, some of international law here ex is excluded. Uh, customary international law is excluded. And um, only certain provisions uh, that by virtue of their content can be invoked, can indeed be invoked. Um, if we look to the, uh, the third key issue, primacy, uh, supremacy of international law in the domestic legal order of the Netherlands, we have to uh, refer to Article 94 of the Dutch Constitution, which says that Dutch law is not applicable if such application is in conflict with provisions of treaties or decisions by international organizations binding on all persons. So the uh, supremacy uh, clause refers to the same uh, limited set of international provisions as the clause on the uh, invocability eh, or direct effect does. But those two provisions, uh, 93 and 94, they don't make very clear how to distinguish uh, those provisions that have direct effect from other provisions of international law. So this was left to the courts and there are two important cases uh, that I wanted to discuss with you. The first case is a case between the National Railways and the Trade Union Confederation. And this was about uh, the right to strike, basically. So the unions had uh, motivated their workers to go on strike and the National Railways wanted the judge to prohibit the unions from doing so. But the uh, Trade Union Confederation uh, relied on or invoked uh, Article 6, Paragraph 4 of the European Social Charter, which included, uh, in their view, a right to strike. And so they directly applied this provision before the Dutch courts. So the question was, uh, can you do this? Can you directly invoke this provision before Dutch courts? And then uh, the uh, Dutch Supreme Court said this was possible, uh, provided uh, three conditions were met. First, the uh, we, Article 6.4 has direct effect, uh, can be directly invoked, if we cannot infer from the travaux préparatoires that direct effect of this provision was excluded. Second, the provision does not oblige the Dutch legislator to make domestic law with a particular content. And third, the provision is suitable by virtue of its content to be applied as if it were a provision of domestic law. So these three conditions have to be met. And uh, in, the, uh, in the case, these three conditions were indeed uh, met. So the Trade Union Confederation could invoke uh, Article 6, Paragraph 4 of the European Social Charter, and they could go on strike. It is important uh, to note that uh, direct application or invocability of an international provision uh, should not lead to a situation in which a judge is basically asked to make policy, uh, so to fill in the uh, discretion left uh, by the international provision to the uh, lawmaker of each and every state. Yeah, but Article 6.4 was so clear, it basically obliged or called upon all states to uh, recognize the right to strike. So there was no policy discretion that need to be filled in. Uh, and so uh, the uh, Trade Union Federation could directly rely on it and they could go on strike. Um, so let's now fast forward a few years and uh, have a look at a, another decision by the Dutch Supreme Court, a very recent decision about the smoking ban in public places. So um, the uh, Tobacco Framework uh, Convention, Article 8, Paragraph 2, uh, obliged all states party to the treaty basically to ban uh, smoking from public uh, spaces. Uh, the Netherlands had implemented this uh, um, a treaty, this obligation, 
but uh, had made an exception for small cafes uh, without staff. So small cafes that were run basically by the owner. Uh, it was considered that in those places smoking should still be allowed. So uh, the question was uh, whether this exception to the general smoking ban uh, was consistent with Article 8, Paragraph 2 of the Tobacco Framework Convention. And a society of non-smokers then uh, went to the judge and alleged that the Netherlands had breached this obligation. So again, uh, this society directly invoked an international provision, this time Article 8, Paragraph 2 of the Tobacco Framework Convention, uh, before the Dutch judge. So a question of direct effect, invocability. And interestingly, uh, the court did not the, exactly apply the same criteria that it had developed in uh, the 1986 case uh, of the railway strike. So, um, in 2014, it was the Dutch Supreme Court's view that Article 8.2 had direct effect, despite the fact that it called upon the Dutch legislator to make domestic law with a particular content. Uh, but the provision was suitable by virtue of its content to be applied as if it were a provision of domestic law. It was sufficiently clear and precise um, in the result that need to be, uh, needed to be achieved. So uh, let me show you the provision. So the provision Article 8, Paragraph 2, um, it's called upon the Dutch legislator to make law. But the, the purpose of this law was so clear, uh, it was to uh, put in place a complete smoking ban that it left very little discretionary power to the, uh, to the legislator. Uh, so there was very little policy to be made and thus the provision uh, was suitable, uh, it was clear and precise enough to be applied and to be invoked directly before the Dutch uh, courts. And so uh, these uh, small cafes with their smoke with their smokers, uh, we will see no more of them after the judgment was rendered in 2014. Thank you for your attention.